Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be reviewing Monster Crown Early Access. Now, before we begin, unlike my previous review with Temtem, I've actually spoken to and worked with Jason, the lead developer, in revealing some monsters for the game. So obviously I am standing from a position of bias. And honestly, it's going to be like that for a lot of the games I decide to do reviews for in the future, because most of the monster taming devs have been very active with and supportive of my endeavors. I will, however, be reviewing this game as though that's not the case. I'm going to give an honest review that encapsulates both my overall experience as well as whether or not I think the game is worth your time and money. So if you wanted to see a review from someone who is deeply invested in the monster taming genre as a whole, you've come to the right place. Okay, so we're going to break this video up into a few sections, much like the last review we did. These sections being the story, how the game plays from both a progression and enjoyability perspective, and of course the monsters themselves. So with all that being said, what is Monster Crown? Monster Crown is a Pokemon inspired pixel art monster taming RPG that focuses on a more mature campaign, uh, crossbreeding, synergy based battling, and pretty well an open area for you to explore once you finish the campaign bit. There are more features planned for the future such as uh, the atomic clock mechanic which works similarly to mega evolution from Pokemon, uh, synergy transformations, other less well-known forms of transforming your monsters as well, and more. What we get in the early access is merely a glimpse of the full game. We do however get a pretty big chunk of the monsters with people generally saying it's about one third of the total roster which if true is kind of nuts because I have a hundred monsters seen and haven't grabbed them all just yet. The story of Monster Crown begins with you the protagonist as a 14 year old child living on a farm when your dad makes you perform some child labor for him. Afterwards you're rewarded with a comic book and you send out a survey for a chance to win a monster. You are given five choices later on when you inevitably do win and upon training the monster you chose a little bit your dad entrusts you with this gem to gift the king of the humanism kingdom. In the world of Monster Crown there are several kingdoms to explore on Crown Island but the early access is only focused on just one of these. On your way there you'll encounter various monsters that you can form a pact with, some shady characters, uh, boss monsters, etc. The campaign will take you roughly five hours or so, just depending on your pacing, but honestly, the campaign's just a sliver of what you can do with the game. The story of Monster Crown from start to finish of the early access seems relatively simple at a first glance. You're basically just delivering something, but there are a lot of deeper meanings and themes at play if you look a little closer. I don't want to spoil anything in this review, as it's sort of part of what captivated me about this game and had me asking so many questions when I did finish, which is good because if a game's story is bad, I wouldn't care about getting the answers to these questions, but I really do. Anyway, so I do have a couple critiques about the main storyline as it is now. There is going to be mild spoilers, but nothing crazy. But basically, uh, you arrive in this first town where there's this rich dude who's planning on buying up the mines and subsequently paying the town folk uh, the bare minimum they need to survive. You end up stepping in uh, and battling this guy, and it ends up being your first real tamer battle in the game. My critique of this storyline is that Jasper, the man in question, seems like such an archetype that his character doesn't even feel real. He almost seems as though he is the literal embodiment of the the greedy businessman stereotype, which is fine, but I feel like perhaps if they were going to go this route, they could have added some hints to the guy's reputation, maybe through some NPC dialogue or something to that extent leading up to Milltown, just so you get a little more insight into the situation. I do think that would at least make it a little more believable. I just had a bit of a hard time taking him as a legitimate character and not just a roadblock. Other than that, the ending to his arc is quite satisfying and sort of sets the tone to the rest of the game, though, like I said, I'm not going to spoil how this whole situation ends. There's a lot more that I'd like to touch on with regards to the story, specifically uh, stuff that has to do with who seems to be the game's main antagonist, Beth, because really interesting stuff happens there, but I'll bite my tongue for now just so you guys get a chance to play it. I don't want to spoil too much. What I will say is that the story is very intriguing. Okay, so how the game plays from a mechanical and enjoyability perspective. So the game is pretty smooth in terms of both level scaling and pacing, in my opinion. They've done a lot to negate unnecessary grind between the beta and now, and they've also added a scouting system, which allows you to grind in the overworld, making it much faster to level up. Another thing I I really like is the overworld encounters. The caves in Temtem, for example, feel extraordinarily frustrating to navigate. And even with the game's sense, which are basically repels, uh, wild encounters aren't fully negated. Dew Cave, on the other hand, though short, is made a thousand times more enjoyable without the excessive random wild encounter. Even Pokemon has mitigated this feature, and although I was apprehensive about them changing that at first, I think it's a vast improvement. Now couple that with Monster Crown's scouting system, and I just think that's an extremely enjoyable aspect of the game. The synergy system is also an interesting touch that adds an extra layer of depth to what otherwise would have been a simple pick the strongest attack and spam system. You can store your synergy for up to four bars by either bracing with tab or switching. It does come with a risk though. If you're knocked out while building it up, you'll lose it. So you can't just switch random mons in, let them die, and then switch back to get a synergy buff. The synergy has various effects, uh, certain 
attacks granting extra power, and even dual type coverage for some. With every monster being monotype and the type effectiveness chart working in a wheel, it actually works. This type of system could be troublesome in a game like Pokemon or Temtem if they're not careful with which types have that dual type effect. For example, an attack like Flying Press in Pokemon, though having a fighting and flying type coverage, doesn't cause crazy multipliers like an attack that was, let's say, ground water would due to multiple type coverage. For example, imagine if Muddy Water was that dual water ground type attack I'm talking about, and you hit Macargo with it. You're looking at two times four weaknesses being exploited, creating a times 32 weakness. It's a little unbalanced. Fortunately, that's not an issue here, so we are able to see more moves have this effect. The breeding mechanic is also surprisingly complex given the way it functions. Basically, you can crossbreed any two monsters together, and based on who you breed, the baby will take uh, one of five forms that's based off of the first parent, with a color palette based off of the second parent. They also inherit move sets, learn sets, and much more, making the monsters quite customizable. There are also more features planned like fusion and transformation, so we can keep that at the back of our head since buying the early access will also give us access to those in the future. Now on the critical side, I have seen some complaints about the crossbreeds not feeling like crossbreeds due to them being one of five potential forms with a color swap. I don't really have an issue with it because just beyond the monster designs themselves, there are a ton of ways to customize them, and I believe that fusion is going to work differently, but don't quote me on that. So like I said, from a scaling and an enjoyment perspective, the game does have a strong foundation, but it does have a few issues. Firstly, the game is really buggy. Like there's a high chance that you're going to run into a few bugs on your playthrough. Most of them are pretty minuscule, like disaligned sprites or faulty collision, but there have been a few pretty bad ones, like uh, one that had me do a trade and then took my monster, but didn't give me the traded monster, or uh, one that let me skip the first boss encounter. Now these bugs, just keep in mind, were present during day one of launch, which is when I'm basing my review off. Of. Jason has been aggressively patching the bigger bugs, so definitely keep in mind that a lot of these bugs may already be fixed or will be fixed really soon. I have also noticed some UI issues. For example, if you select the run option and then click something else before the sequence finishes, you'll end up in a different menu. It did soft lock me once, but I couldn't replicate that. But again, it's not something that I'm really worried about because most of the bugs are just a mild inconvenience, to be quite honest. But I will, however, say there are quite a few. Monster Crown from the get go seems like a very ambitious project, and with it having randomly generated items, and NPCs and whatnot, it does make it more prone to these types of issues. Another critique I have, and this isn't a big issue, but there are some areas that are inaccessible, which is fine, but I think that they should either put something there to block off progression, or just put a sign or something, or a fence, or just something to block you from being able to go there. The reason I say this is because there's a cave that you can't enter, so you just walk on top of it. There's a bridge that you just can't cross, and a raft spot that just doesn't let you cross as well. Now, I know that's because these areas are not ready, but I've seen a lot of people thinking that they're glitches when they're not. So I think just throwing up a fence or something could do wonders. This is also the same for some of the women who try to block your path. There's this one woman specifically where if you try to go around them, there's just an invisible wall that if you actually press the interaction button, you'll get the girl's dialogue as if she's right in front of you. I think they should just make that a fence and then leave the girl where she is. All in all, with regards to the more mechanical aspects of the game, I think it is pretty strong if you get over those little bugs. The story is going to net you around five hours, but there's a lot to do besides that given other mechanics like wild eggs, which are basically randomly generated eggs eggs that can have anything that's available in the game in them, aka the other starters if you're interested, uh, the crossbreeding mechanic which we talked about, uh, of course collecting all the monsters, etc. Most if not all the shortcomings are not really a big deal for me because with an early access title, bugs will get fixed. So the foundation is what I'm most concerned about when it comes to this and I think it's quite strong. Now the most important aspect for a lot of people is the monsters and let me just say that of course this part of the review is going to be subjective. I might have an opinion on them that's totally different from your own and that's totally fine. I'm going to try to bring forth the reasons as to why I like the creatures, but ultimately, I can't really help the subjectivity of this. Anyways, I personally love the Monster Crown designs. I think this and the overarching narrative of the game are its strongest assets. Not only do the monsters look more edgy and rugged and like monsters as opposed to sort of cutesy animals, their backstories are actually pretty damn cool or pretty damn dark. Whether it be Hoo that is said to go about its malicious business regardless of the well-being of its tamer, or Canites fighting to the death and potentially being eaten by their own, or Topsy swallowing their prey whole seemingly just for the fun of it. These monsters feel like monsters, they feel dangerous and I like it. Now back to designs, for me Monster Crown has so many that I like and I can't even think of any off the top on my head that I don't like. Want a dragon that breathes rust? Check. How about a gargoyle dragon? Check. Menacing crocodile dino looking dude? Check. Epic sea serpent? Check. 
You guys get where I'm going with this. For me, I've always been a little disappointed with some of the Monster Tamer games in terms of that aspect because I feel like a lot of them stray away from the more uh, dragony monsters or even just more menacing creatures in general. But Monster Crown doesn't shy away from that. It in fact basks in it and prides itself on that stylistic choice. Monster Crown as a whole has a lot to offer from both a stylistic and playability standpoint. It is plagued by some bugs, but these are being aggressively quashed and in the grand scheme of things will be transient. Much like how Temtem servers had a lot of issues during the initial early access launch, Monster Crown also has some improving to do, but that's ultimately the point of early access, to open up a game to a wider audience so that it can help find issues with the game and create an overall better product. I have a lot of faith in this project, and honestly, if you are willing to look past some temporary mild inconveniences, I'd say it's definitely worth the $14.99 USD. With all that being said, let me know what you guys thought of this review. Uh, was it helpful? I do try to model these in such a way that can be concise and to the point rather than going off into every specific aspect of the game. For example, I'm not a big music guy, so I'm not going to sit here and break down the music. All I can tell you is it's really catchy. I actually listen to it while I'm editing my videos. So yeah, if you do already have Monster Crown, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe for more Monster Tamer and Monster Crown content. Follow me on Twitter at GymLeaderEd. Check out our subscriber Discord, all links in the description. Until next time, peace.